everyone, my name is Kimmy Williams and today I want to talk to you about a rather interesting topic. If you're a professional software engineer, it's something that I'm sure you rely on on a daily basis. And if you're learning how to program, it's something that is integral for your success. Yes, I'm talking about how to effectively search for answers on the internet. Call it effectively Googling, call it effectively looking on Stack Overflow, but it's something we all face when we're programming and an error pops up or we reach a block of code that we actually have no idea how it works. We look to the internet to help us find solutions to our problems. I wanna preface, especially to the newbies out there, that as developers, it's really hard to ask questions sometimes. You might have this expectation in your head that when you're trying to be a friend an engineer, backend engineer, or go deep in a language that you need to know all of the answers about that language. You need to know how it works, how it functions, the ins and outs. Let me just make it clear that that actually isn't the case. For me as a software engineer, even though I love writing code in Java and I know a lot about Java, by no means do I know all of the ins and outs of the syntax of Java. I heavily rely on the language documentation and on Google in order for me to effectively program. Admitting that is somewhat of a vulnerable position to be in, but trust me, if you work in a professional environment or in an environment where you're working collaboratively, it's integral to ask questions. Any senior engineer, technical mentor, or manager will probably tell you that rather than staring at your code, racking your brain, trying to figure out what you're doing wrong, it's better to just ask a question. Get your answers fast and move on to the next thing. Especially now, in the scenarios that we're in, a lot of times we're working by ourselves. So we have to look to the internet for our solutions. And searching for things, especially if you don't exactly know what you're searching for, can be difficult. So in this video, I'm I want to give you some of my tips and some hints that I've asked my colleagues as well on how to effectively search for answers on the internet while you're programming. I'm hoping to create a video later actually utilizing these tips and tricks and showcasing them to you live. So if you're interested in seeing that, please leave a comment down below and thumbs up this video. Tip number one, it's important to understand a project's resources. Especially if you're looking at open source projects, chances are it lives on GitHub. GitHub is a great resource because not only can you actually look at the code from the project that you're using, but chances are it has tech documentation linked in the readme, a community around it that you can rely on to ask direct and specific questions, a framework to submit issues, or even pull requests if you wanna change the code. There's a lot available there. If you're not working with an open source project, a lot of times the library also has this resource, it might just take a little bit more searching. Aside from GitHub, it's great to look and see if a project has a Stack Overflow tag, a Twitter handle, community forums, or a Slack group where you can talk to other individuals who are utilizing the library, and occasionally projects with a healthy community around it might sometimes even have office hours. Take inventory of these resources ahead of time so you know what's available to you. As you start to use more and more libraries, you'll figure out what works for you. And decidedly, when you're looking into using a new library, if it doesn't meet your necessary resource requirements, you can always look for another one that has similar functionality. As you become an expert in your space, it's also good to pay this forward. And if a project doesn't have those resources, try and work with the maintainers to build them. Going along with this, my second tip is to also understand how you prefer to learn. Me personally, I'm a visual learner. If the choice is between a blog or a video, I'm going to choose the video every single time. When you're looking through a project's resources and they have a lot in the offering, pick and choose what you think will work best for you based on how you learn. This could be videos, blogs, Q&A sessions, sometimes even books are available on a specific library or language. From time to time, a project might have more investment in one type of learning resource. So as you start to learn how to use the language or project, Take note of how you've learned these things. And again, maybe eventually you can pay it forward and create those resources for the project. As you can tell, I'm all about paying it forward. I think it's safe to say in open source that a universal resource that projects have are the source code and the tech talks. So my third tip is to actually look at those. I definitely identify with programmers that like to look at code blocks and copy and paste, but there is actually a lot of value in reading the tech docs. When you're working in open source, it's not just a black box. You can read the actual source code and then see the tech docs that the engineers who wrote that source code wrote so that way you can understand that source code. I have to say at this point, 
sometimes tech docs are not good. So have patience with the maintainer. A lot of times it's a single person maintaining this open source project, be patient with them. If the docs don't make sense to you, that doesn't mean that you're a bad engineer and it doesn't mean that the maintainer is a bad engineer. Eventually though, I think that you'll be able to get it. When you're looking at the tech docs, the first place that I usually look to are any quick start guides or hello world tutorials for the project. Hopefully these resources give you a really good succinct idea of what the project or library does. And again, there are a lot of libraries out there, so this is also a great way to determine if a library fulfills your needs or not. Now getting into the nitty gritty of actually searching for things, my fourth tip is to understand what you're looking for. There have been countless times where there is a line of code or a block of code that I don't understand. There are a handful of ways where you can tackle this. First, you can just copy the code. It can be a line, it can be a block, but putting it into your favorite search engine and seeing what comes up is always a great way to start. With that in mind, Google isn't your only search engine that you can use as a resource. When I'm coding, I actually search on GitHub way more than I do on Google. On GitHub, when you search for code, you can actually see people's fully fledged projects and how they've used the line that you're also using. The same is true for Stack Overflow. You can search for lines of code on Stack Overflow, but you can also search for project specific questions, keywords, concepts, and things of the like. If you have a general understanding of what the line or block of code is supposed to do, it's useful to search for the concept rather than the code. Occasionally, if you are able to generalize that concept, you might be able to find your solution written in a different language or with a different project. This not only strengthens your muscle on being able to read different types of code, but in doing so, you might be able to optimize with a different project or library that helps you solve your problem. Sometimes too, when you're searching for these different answers, you'll come across websites that might not be in your native language. I really wanna hit it home that you should not ignore or be turned off by those resources. Code is a universal language, so even if the website is in a language that you don't understand, chances are you'll be able to understand the code. So again, for all my developers who are like me and just like to copy and paste code, definitely don't ignore resources that are in a different language from your own. If you have runnable code and it outputs an error or something that you don't understand, my best tip for understanding what errors do is to actually use quotes. If you're getting generic errors, but it gives you some kind of output, make sure when you search, you put in quotes the exact output it gives you. If you have a library specific error, take the name of the error and search for it in the tech docs. If it's a really healthy project, sometimes they have frequently asked questions or frequently received errors. And if you get lucky, the problem that you're facing might be documented there. In general though, if you're looking at something really specific, definitely be sure to use quotes, whether you're on Google, GitHub, Stack Overflow, so that way you can try and get the most direct answer that you can. When all else fails, my final tip is again, to not be afraid to ask for help. Again, don't be afraid to post on Stack Overflow, in forums, in chat groups, whatever you need to do to get your answer. If you're specifically a newbie or just getting started, I definitely recommend using the hashtag 100 days of code whenever you post something like a question or a status update. I also want to convey that for anything Facebook open source, myself and the other developer advocates on this channel are a resource to you. We want to help you. So if you have any code specific questions, feel free to leave a comment. We'll try and address them either in a video or in a direct message to you. As always, you can ask us questions through the Facebook open source Twitter account or our individual Twitter accounts. So hopefully you found this video helpful on how to effectively search for technical concepts when you're programming. Again, if you would like to see any of these concepts in action, please leave a comment down below and I'll do a follow-up video. My name is Kimmy Williams. Thank you again so much for watching. Bye.